you still remember the flip mosaic model that we learned last week? This model was proposed by Singer and Nicholson in 1972. So in this model, as you can see here, the plasma membrane actually separates the, the cell from the extracellular fluid. Now in our syllabus, <coughs> the extracellular fluid is also known as the interstitial. The interstitial fluid, also known as the, the body fluid. Now what you can see in this diagram is the plasma membrane is actually made up of <coughs> phospholipid bilayer. Because the head of the phospholipid molecule is hydro, is hydrophilic. The head loves water because the head is polar, while the tails are hydro, hydrophobic. So as such, the phospholipid molecules will arrange themselves in a way that the head, <coughs> the head will be facing the part with a lot of water, which is the interstitial fluid and the cyto and the cytoplasmic fluid. Whereas the, the hydrophobic tails they try to arrange in a way that they face each other. And then how to make the phospholipid bilayer stronger and less permeable to water sub, uh, water soluble substances? You know, else water, let's say water molecules might just break through this uh, phospholipid bilayer easily. Now, so to make the phospholipid bilayer less permeable to water soluble substances, then we have the cholesterol. The cholesterol molecules here linking the fatty acids of the phospholipid bilayer together. Now, what is fatty acid then? Now, the tails, uh, can you see that? The tails are actually the, the fatty acid of the phospholipid molecule. So, when the cholesterol molecules are there, so they will try to link, they, they will try to link the fatty acids together, making the phospholipid bilayer, number one, stronger, number two, stable, number three, more flexible, and number four, less permeable. Less permeable to water-soluble substances. Then in this diagram also, we can see that there are actually a lot of protein molecules floating in the phospholipid bilayer. What do we call this protein? Now, there are various types of proteins. As long as the proteins are involved in the transportation of substances across the plasma membrane, then we call this protein as transport proteins. There are two types of transport proteins here. Now, so if you look at this diagram, this protein has a pore in it, so we call this protein as pore protein. Whereas this protein, it has, uh, it has one of its end uh, closes and the other end opens. So this protein is known as a carrier protein. Now let's come back to this uh, diagram. Inside this diagram, you will be able to see some uh, carbohydrates attached to the phospholipid molecule or the protein. So if the carbohydrates is attached to lipid, then we call this structure as glycolipid. If the glycogen or the carbohydrates is attached to a protein, then you call this, um, this structure as glycoprotein. Let's recall what we have just learned. Now describe the model eight marks. Number one, the plasma membrane is dynamic with the protein and the phospholipid molecules free to move within the membrane. So um, in the fluid mosaic model, as suggested by the name itself, the plasma membrane is never static. It is very fluid. The phospholipid molecules are allowed to move laterally sideways and then the proteins 
floating in it it is also that they are also free to move about freely in the cytoplasm then number two each phospholipid molecule consists of two parts okay and there's a, a polar head and a non and a pair of non-polar tails and then in plasma membrane number c the phospholipids arrange themselves in a bilayer form with the hydrophilic heads facing the interstitial fluid and the cytoplasmic fluid and because the heads love water then d phospholipid bilayer also contains cholesterol now why is it cholesterol it is to make the plasma membrane more stable stronger flexible and less permeable to water soluble substances then G, there are two types of transport proteins here, namely pore protein and the carrier protein. Pore protein, you'll be able to see a tunnel, a tunnel in them, whereas the carrier protein is closed at one end and open at one end uh, at one time. Then H, some membrane proteins that have carbohydrates attached to them are called glycoprotein. Now, after learning this, one one question might strike uh, might strike us. So what actually determines whether a molecule or a substance could move across the plasma membrane? Now to, so to, to study this, we need to know that actually there are two factors influencing the ability of the substances or the molecules to go across the plasma membrane. So one is the size and the other one is the charge of the molecules. So of course, if, if the size is too big, the size uh, the molecules couldn't diffuse across the let's say the pore protein because the pore protein has a specific uh, size of pore whereas if the uh, let, let's say the carrier protein uh, is negatively charged then any particles or any molecules with negative charge will be repelled away by the carrier protein all right now let's look at the the possible molecules that might move across the plasma membrane all right so the first group they are lipid soluble such as such as uh, glycerol fatty acids and vitamin adk and then non more non-polar molecules such as the gas molecules and the small molecules such as water molecules so this group this group of substances can just diffuse across the phospholipid bilayer directly without any help of the transport protein then what if uh, this group of molecules they are small but they are water soluble still remember the cholesterol actually makes the phospholipid less permeable to water soluble substances so in this case yeah all these small water soluble molecules such as sodium ions potassium ions chloride ions and definitely the water molecules might need the help of pore protein to go across the plasma membrane other water soluble molecules that are large such as glucose if you look at the chemical formula then you know it it is a big giant molecule as compared to uh, the size of water molecule and then another one would be amino acids if you look at the general the general structure or the general formula of the amino acid then you will know that it has <coughs> one carbon central atom attached to a group uh, 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 NH2 group another COOH group hydrogen and an alcohol group here the alcohol group might have more than one carbon atoms making amino acid also a very large water soluble molecules so since they are large definitely they will be stopped by the pore protein pore protein does not allow them to pass through so what to do now they might need the help of carrier protein so let's practice look at this diagram we have three types uh, we have three groups of uh, molecules here on this side we have the interstitial fluid and on the other side we have the intra uh, intracellular fluid which is 
actually the cytoplasmic fluid. Now, if the molecules are small or they are a little bit soluble, then they can just diffuse across the phospholipid bilayer easily, directly, but with no hindrance because, uh, because they are soluble in phospholipid. <coughs> now, otherwise, the water soluble modules might need the help of transfer protein. They have to go across plasma membrane. If they are small, then they can just travel across the pore protein from interstitial fluid into cytoplasmic fluid. And if they are large water soluble molecules, then they might need the help of carrier protein. So if you still remember these three, these three are actually the carrier protein at different stages. The glucose you know, must first must first attach to the carrier protein, causing the carrier protein to change shape and faces another side. Then only the glucose or the amino acid can be brought into the cytoplasmic fluid. Alright. Now then what about water? Now water is considered small and water is also uh, water soluble. So there are actually two pathways for water to travel into the cytoplasm. Almost 70%, more than 70% of the water actually diffuses into the cells with the help of power protein. Well, the rest can just diffuse across the plasma, uh, the phospholipid bilayer into the cell. Now, to put it in a nutshell, let's see. If the molecules are lipid soluble, then they can just diffuse across the phospholipid, the phospholipid molecule directly. If not, then you got to ask, are they are the water soluble molecules big or small? If they are small, then they will go through with the help of pore protein. Otherwise, they have to go in uh, into the cells with the help of carrier protein. Then what about water molecules? There are actually two ways for water molecules to go into the cells. Almost 70% of the water molecules diffuse with the help of pore protein. The other less than, I would say less than 30% of water actually diffuse directly across the phospholipid pilot. Alright, so hope that you enjoy this class. Thank you. See you around.